Hi everyone, this is Bob Marshall, Professor Harris's English 314 class. This is my instructional video on how to grow oak trees from acorns. Uh, this is my, my passion. I love growing trees. I've grown trees since I was a, a little kid. And this is just one of the niches that I've always loved to do. And so I'm going to share with you one of the traits of growing trees directly from seed. So bear with me as we run through these slides and I'll talk you through it as best I can. Okay. In particular, I'm going to talk about uh, oak trees. And um, the seed of the oak tree is the acorns. I'm sure everybody's familiar with what acorns look like. There are several different types of oak trees. I'm not going to specify any particular one. All the pictures in here will be of different varieties of, of oak trees. This particular one happens to be white oaks. Um, and uh, So what you're looking for to start off is to collect acorns from a healthy tree. So you're looking for a tall tree, a mature tree, and you're looking for acorns that are healthy looking like these on the picture. Collect up as many as you can. Sort out the ones, any of them that look like they have holes in them or they're cracked or anything like that. Dispose of those. You're obviously looking for the best that have the best opportunity of sprouting. One of the tests to make sure that the acorns are viable is a float test. What I like to do is I put the acorns in a bucket of water for about 15 minutes. Any that float on the top like this are no good. Those are dried out and the, the seed is dead. The ones that sink to the bottom are good seeds. One thing to be cautious of is that you don't want to leave them in there too long because once they soak up the water they're going to want to start sprouting. So 15 minutes is about the longest you want to leave them in there. The next thing you want to do is mix your soil. I like to mix equal parts of uh, moss and potting soil and uh, you mix it together in a, in a bucket like this, in a five gallon bucket and Mix it really, really good. Make sure it's all mixed together well. After that, I take styrofoam cups. There's several different ways of doing this. This is the most recent way that I've been doing it is to cut a hole from the center to the edge. And that moss in there, the peat moss, will keep it from, keep the soil from leaking out. Uh, I put a little handful right in the bottom and then put the mixture on top of that. This was the way I used to do it. It was the three holes in the bottom and it has some advantages and it has some disadvantages. The disadvantage is if it's when you're setting it on a flat surface this rim around the edge of the cup will create a dam and it'll stop the water from leaking out which is what you want. And you can see on the sides of this one where it's cut when you pour the water in the top all the excess water will leak out the sides. Also, I use grating. This is expanded metal grating. That helps it to drain out as well. Um, I've got on here that I use a razor blade to cut these. That's uh, the easiest way to do it. I use a razor knife, cut down almost to the center, and cut that whole piece right out. The next thing you want to do, like I said, was put some of the moss in the very bottom to keep the, the soil from leaking out. Fill the cup almost to the top with soil and tap it down, compress it lightly, not too hard. These cups break really easily. So you just want to tamp it down enough so the soil's firm and there's no air pockets in there. That's the most important thing is not to have air pockets when you're growing trees. That'll kill the roots, the air gets around the roots, the nitrogen leaves the roots, they dry out, they crack, and they, and they die. So make sure your soil is tamped down gently, not too hard. 
Okay, next thing you do is you place the acorn on its side. A lot of people want to put it nose down um, because they think that it's going to sprout from the nose up. It doesn't actually. It actually sprouts from the back, but the acorn itself acts as an anchor. It'll split in the back where the cap is, and the uh, shoot will come off the bottom and go down into the soil, and the leaves will come out through the top. So you want to put it just down, poke a, use your finger and poke the soil down just enough so that the acorn sits right almost level with the surface. Okay, water is the most important thing for growing trees. They need as much water as they can get. I like using a container like this. Fill the container completely full of water. Let it sit for about half an hour until those cups are completely saturated. As you can see, the soil here is completely saturated. That's how you want it. At least until the, the uh, seedlings are six inches tall. So water them twice a day. Take them out of the pot after, the, after you've soaked it in here. I take each one of the cups out, I put it back on the expanded metal so they can drain out, and then put them in the windowsill, which is the next slide. Okay, you want a window, a southern exposure. Southeast exposure is the best, somewhere where the sun is going to be shining on your plants all day long. This is the most ideal way to do it. We have a sliding glass door in the back, and it sits right against the sliding glass door. All my little plants sit right there. Plenty of sun. You can see the back back there. Plenty of sun coming in all day long. They love it. They're nice and warm in there, and the sun's getting to them all day. Water and sun are the most important things for starting the trees. Okay, again, fill the cups up with water every day. Put them on the metal, on the expanded metal to drain out. You can see they're starting to sprout here. They're, they're getting up to about six inches. And that's where um, we'll, we want them to be before we can start moving them outside. Uh, there's a, a process called hardening off that when the seedling is big enough, you need to put it out so the wind starts moving it around so the roots can set in hard otherwise you'll have a weak root system so again water them heavily put them back on the windowsill okay you're looking for the first leaves to to poke out this is what it's going to look like uh, and again you can see right here where the cap is popped off the shell is cracked and the sprout has started coming up. The root is already going down. This is what it looks like in the wild. These two right here are white oaks. You can tell because they have the loby leaves. They're white oaks. They're a very sweet, low tannic acid acorn. And the wildlife love to eat these. So you're looking for these leaves to appear. And it takes about three or four weeks. This is when the seedling is at its most vulnerable. It doesn't take much for them to dry up, and it doesn't take much for them to, to freeze. So you want to make sure they're warm in the sun and have plenty of water. Okay, so now once they've reached about six inches tall, we're going to start hardening them off. You set the cups out on the patio or the deck once a day. Um, you, you want to start off the first couple of days only for a little while, maybe an hour, and then bring them back in, and the next day do them for a little bit longer and a little bit longer. Eventually, when it's, uh, it's saying to leave them out all day and then at night bring them indoors, um, when there's no danger of frost, which in our area is May 17th is our last frost danger day, you're able to leave them outside all night long. 
the sooner you can get them to harden off, the quicker they'll they'll start growing rapidly. Okay, so now we've got them hardened off. They've been outside for a couple of weeks. Um, they've been exposed to the the wind is the big thing is to get those roots so the roots are grabbing into the soil and you want to remove them out of the cup like this it says remove the root ball the clumps of the roots and the soil from each of the cups and plant it out outdoors in the late part of may this is the way i like to do it this is a great drawing um, you need to dig a hole that's very generous uh, I, I do a hole that's three foot wide, three foot deep. Fill it up with a soft soil with a lot of uh, organic compost in it. And uh, that will give the roots something to adhere to. One thing that's really important is to keep that lower part of the hole open. I dig the hole, the three foot by three foot hole, and fill it completely full of water. Saturate that hole completely full. And then I put the root ball in there. And right here is called the crown. See, this is right there is called the crown of the tree. That's where the root starts and the stalk ends. It's very important to have that flush with where the dirt is, where the soil is. Not above, not below. That's where your, your soil line needs to be. So whatever you need to do to make sure that that stays above the soil is what you need to do. Okay. Um, you can see we did a few layers of sand in here, so it's sand, and then the, the compost, and then sand, and then the compost, and then some really nice topsoil on top of that. Water it really, really well after it's in, and water it every day. Uh, Ten foot is the minimum I would put these apart if you're going to leave them there, and I would highly recommend once you plant these, to plan on leaving them where they're going to be because they don't transplant well at all. Uh, make sure when you plant your tree, you look around for things. Remember, this tree is can live up to 200 years, and it's going to get six foot in diameter, the base of it, and it'll probably get up to 100 feet tall depending on which which type you're going in. And it has a huge canopy, a 60 foot canopy for a 100 foot tree which means you don't want to plant it right next to your house. You don't want to plant it right next to your driveway, near the road, underneath power lines. You're just setting that tree up for failure. Find a good open place with good, rich, well-drained soil and plant it there. And sunlight is ultimately important. Um, plant them. If you're going to stagger plant, which means if you're going to plant five or six this year, five or six next year, Always start planting your trees north and work south. That way, your trees aren't going to be shadowing each other. So as the trees get taller, they'll still have all-day sunlight. And again, 10 foot is the very minimum because these things are going to be huge. And you'll probably even have to weed them out. If you plant them in 10-foot intervals, um, that is typically what you would do for a... Um, lumber if you're planting groves for lumber because these trees will grow very straight and the first branches will be very high in the air so you'll have really good lumber maybe the first 20 feet of the tree will be straight straight uh, stock and it'll be great it won't have any knots in it or anything like that if you're growing these trees for your backyard uh, put them 30 foot apart that way they have plenty of room to, to bush out and to grow so I hope you enjoyed our video um, and learned something from it. It's been a pleasure doing this, and uh, I look forward to doing more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions, you can get a hold of me at rcmarshall at alaska.edu. Thank you, and have a great day.